Jack, thanks so much for taking the time today. It's a real honor to be with such a legend, not only in golf, but all that you've accomplished in business, all the money you've raised with your foundation, as well as your family values. Well, thank you. So, so many uh, people thought Tom Brady passed his prime and just recently won his seventh Super Bowl. Many thought the same of you prior to winning the 86 Masters. How did your approach to the game change as you grew older? Didn't really, didn't really change. I just, my priorities changed. Uh, I mean, golf was sort of my priority up till about age 40. And then after age 40, I got more interested in more of what my kids were doing and they, they were doing. I still prepared, but I didn't, you know, I just enjoyed playing golf and be part of it. And all of a sudden I, you know, hit lightning in the bottle in, uh, in 86. And I was prepared, but not as much as I normally would be. But once I got into it, I remembered how to play golf. and. Uh, <laughs> And you know, it's uh, you, you might see a few, few, few touchdown passes. <laughs> so when you look at this painting, uh, what memories does it bring back? That's a 17th hole. And uh, that was a nice little putt that I made, about a 12 footer that uh, uh, looked like it was gonna break right. And I said it was gonna break back to the left. Jackie wasn't too sure. I said, well, I'm gonna put it that way. The ball went a little bit right, then straightened back out. And, it went in the hole, and uh, that put me in front in the tournament for the first time. And did your uh, progression in the sport, did, do you feel it came naturally, or something you feel like you really had to work hard at? Uh, well, I think, I, mean, I think anybody who's going to be good at anything has to have some natural ability. And I, and I think that you, but just, it's what you do with it. And, uh, you know, I worked pretty hard at it for, for a lot of years. and. Uh, uh, I enjoyed it, but you know, it's like anything else. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're not going to be good at it. And I love playing golf, and so uh, uh, for me, uh, it was a labor of love. And uh, uh, you know, I, I worked what, what I what I needed to, and, and and what I what I wanted to, and what I thought I had to do. Uh, and I felt like if I did more work more than that, I'd get I'd get uh, stale. Mm -hmm. So I always had a fine edge of being uh, sharp and not quite perfect. Uh, and try to make sure that when I got to an event that I would be, I would just take that last little bit forward. Mm. And so that, that's sort of the way I handled it. I'd say similarly in art, I, you know, I had the talent, but I also really had to constantly be at it to, to pro progress over sure the years. Sure you do. Um, and, and what would you say is the most challenging part of being widely considered the greatest golfer of all time? Well, I don't know if there's any challenging part about it, except you got a bunch of guys challenging you all the time. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, you just had to be on top of your game. Mm -hmm. you just, uh, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, if you only had one guy you had to beat, I mean, that's, that's not a big deal. If you beat him, then, you know, what else do you do? Mm -hmm. But I always had a bunch of guys coming at me all the time and new young guys coming up. And uh, I enjoyed that. I thought it was fun. And it allowed me to keep climbing the mountain and led me to try to get, try to keep getting better. and. Uh, uh, it pushed me to do that, so uh, Absolutely. I enjoyed the push. So you've designed uh, over 300 golf courses. You know, what in inspired you to start and get into that? Well, uh, Pete Dye inspired me to get involved. He got me out to see his golf course at, that he was doing in Columbus about the mid-60s mid and asked me if I would consult with him. But then I said, I, Pete, I don't know anything about golf course design. He says, yeah, you know more than you think. <laughs> So anyway, I started fiddling with it. I really enjoyed, we did Harbor Town, and I really enjoyed that. We did a half a dozen courses, and I did a half a dozen courses with Des Desmond Muirhead. And then I sort of said, you know, I'd done enough of it that I was sort of interested in my own expression. And uh, it's no different than what you do. Uh, you have a canvas, and you put what you want to put on the canvas. I have a canvas, which is the ground, and I put what I think should be on that canvas. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I didn't know that I had much uh, artistic or creative ability that way, but I guess I do. And uh, you know, I visualize everything that I do. I don't know, I, you probably visualize what you're doing here. Absolutely. And so uh, I, just, I visualize and I, I think about how I uh, feel like it would be to play it and, and do this, and I try to recreate what my thoughts were onto the ground and into a, into a specific situation. I try to take the ground and use, use it as natural as I can. And, uh, if I have to adjust it, then I adjust it. But if I can, if I can fit it all in without doing anything, that's what I try to do. And uh, uh, it's fun. I enjoy it. It's a, every golf course is different, and, uh, and every piece of ground is different. Mm -hmm. Every situation is different. So it's a, 
it's something not only being creative, but it's uh, also very satisfying. I'm sure, and making it challenging for the golfers, you know, with the, each course that you Well, create. yeah, it depends what, I don't, I don't make it for the golf, I don't do it for myself or for mm -hmm. the golfer, I do it for the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, every owner has a, has a different reason why he would want a golf course. Mm -hmm. And whether it be for public golf, for, to have a high, round of, high number of rounds, uh, a resort golf course, which you want to have so people can get around it and play it and enjoy it. Uh, a tournament golf course where you want to you want to challenge people, but you also want to make sure that the members are going to play in 51 weeks of the year can play it. Uh, you've got all those different things that you have to uh, pull together, as well as whatever the ground is, and whatever the, the, the water about amount of water that's around, or, or whatever you might have. You, you got to you got to work with what's there. And Jack, you've accomplished so much in the world of golf. Uh, again, raised so much with your foundation for, for children for so many years. Uh, and I look in your office, I see all of these family photos with the inner family. You know, what are you most proud of, probably in each of those aspects? Well, I would say family. I mean, I, you know, golf is a game. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's been a vehicle for me to uh, do a lot of things. If it, would, if it weren't for golf, I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be sitting in some little cubby hole somewhere and. Uh, Barbara and I'd be, you know, <laughs> you know, having a donut or something. But uh, the uh, uh, the cause of golf, it's allowed me and given me a platform to uh, be able to have a voice in golf, have a uh, uh, be able to raise money and uh, uh, create awareness uh, uh, for, for kids. Uh, you know, it's everything that I everything that I've done has come from the game of golf, and mm -hmm. so I'm very blessed with that and. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's fun. I I, I think my uh, the ability to be able to uh, have uh, you know five kids and 22 grandkids now, <laughs> one great grandchild and two more on the way. Uh, I think a friend of mine always put it what he says. He says he says he says, he says we're, we're, we're populating the world with little Nicholases. <laughs> Very fortunate. Thank you so much for okay, this today. Thank you. Thank you.